In this video, we're going to explain what a z-score is, and we're also going to explain why they are useful in real life. So I've got a little example here to help illustrate what a z-score is all about. It says the mean mark for a mass test is 30%, and the standard deviation is 10%. What z-score did Sharon get if she received a mark of 50% in her test? So what we're going to do is we're going to label our bell curve. We know that the mean mark is 30%. So that's going to go right in the middle where the peak of our bell curve is. And we'll write down that that's the mean. Now the standard deviation is 10%, which means as we move to the right, we're going to add on 10% each time. So we get 40%, 50%, and 60%. And we label these with plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. The reason we label them this is because we've added the standard deviation once when we got 40%. To get 50%, we added the standard deviation twice. And to get 60%, we added the standard deviation three times. When we move to the left, we subtract the standard deviation. We're subtracting 10 each time. So we get 20%, 10%, and 0%. And we write down negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. This is because when we get 20%, we subtract the standard deviation once, and then we subtract the standard deviation twice to get 10%, and we subtract it three times to get 0%. What number do you think should belong under the mean? Well, the number that belongs under the mean is 0, which makes sense because we've added the standard deviation 0 times. We've added nothing to the 30%. These numbers that we've put here down the bottom are known as our z-scores. So let's go back to the question. It said, what z-score did Sharon get if she received a mark of 50% in her test. Now you'll notice that 50% lines up with plus 2, meaning that Sharon's Z score is plus 2 or positive 2. So why? Why do we want to know someone's Z score? Well, it comes in really handy when you're trying to compare things. So let's move to the next slide. And here we've changed the question slightly. So Sharon received a mark of 50% in her mathematics test. That's still the same. But she also received a mark of 70% in her science test. What was her better result? Now, most people, when they look at a question like this, they say, well, it's the science test. 70% is higher than 50%. But we need to look at the whole picture. Remember that the maths test had a mean of 30%. And it had a standard deviation of 10%. What about the science test? Well, let's say that the science test had a mean of 50%. So it had a higher mean. When we know this, we can look at it and go, well, she actually scored 20% more than the mean in her science test and 20% more than the mean in the math test. So now all of a sudden, it looks like these test results are equivalent to each other. A 70% in science is equivalent to a 50% in maths. Maybe the maths test was harder than the science test. But we actually need to delve even deeper than this. I'm going to tell you that the standard deviation for the science test was 15%. Now we need to fill in these bell curves first. Now we've already done the maths bell curve. So I'm going to copy this down below. And now we need to fill in the science bell curve. Remembering that the mean of 50% must be in the middle where the peak of our bell curve is. Now, if our standard deviation is 15%, we're adding 15% each time. So we're going to have 65% with a z-score of plus 1, 80% with a z-score of plus 2, and 95% with a z-score of plus 3. Going to the left, we're going to have 35% with a z-score of negative 1, 
20% with a Z score of negative 2 and 5% with a Z score of negative 3. Now let's look at these marks. In maths, she got 50%, which I'm going to label here. That was a Z score of positive 2. We'll write that down. Z score of positive 2. And then she got 70% in science. Now, this probably be roughly here, somewhere between plus 1 and plus 2. The Z score is roughly 1.3 or positive 1.3. Now when we look at the tests, we can see that the mass test has a higher Z score. So Sharon got a better result in her mass test. Z scores are really useful when you want to make comparisons like this one. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing Z scores and explaining why they're useful in real life. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.